Greetings, and it's our joy once again to come to you this week as we spend time looking at the scriptures concerning the rapture of the church. We had read earlier from 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 13 through 18, where the Apostle Paul had described exactly how the Lord would come to take his church, take the people away. And right after he describes that, he continues writing. And remember when the Apostle Paul wrote, he wasn't writing in chapter and verse, he was writing a sequence, a continuous sequence of thoughts. So after, right after he described the rapture of the church, he writes this in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 1 on. He says, But concerning the times and seasons, brethren, you have no need that I should write to you. For you yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so comes as a thief in the night. For when they say peace and safety, then sudden destruction comes upon them as labor pains upon a pregnant woman, and they shall not escape. But you, brethren, are not in darkness, so that this day should not overtake you as a thief. You are all sons of light and sons of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as others do, but let us watch and be sober. And then he says this, verse 9, For God has did not appoint us to wrath, but to obtain salvation through our Lord. Jesus Christ, who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with Him. Now, this is right in connection with what He has described in the rapture of the church. First Thessalonians, the verse chapter four, verse thirteen to eighteen, that those who are who are fallen asleep, those who are, who are alive, are all going to meet Him in the air. And in verses nine and ten of chapter five, He tells us clearly why God is going to do this. He says. For God did not appoint us to wrath. The word wrath is just another way of saying judgment. God has not appointed us to judgment, but He has appointed us to experience the salvation so that whether we are alive or dead, we are going to be together with Him. So the rapture of the church, what is the purpose of it right here? It's to take us out of the way so that we, the church, the people of God, are not going to go through the wrath, through the judgment, the seven years of tribulation. So people ask, you know, how do you know that the rapture of the church will take place before the tribulation? Well, he tells us right here, verses 9 and 10, 1 Thessalonians 5. Why is that rapture going to take place? So that we don't have to go through the wrath, through the judgment, but whether we are alive or dead, we are going to be together with the Lord in the air. So here's such a convincing evidence that we, the church, are going to be kept from the judgment, the seven years of tribulation that will come upon the earth, which is described for us in Revelation chapter 6 through 19. We are not going to be there. We'll be taken out of the way. What an exciting time. Looking forward to it. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your goodness and mercy that you've not appointed us for judgment but experience salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. And we look forward, Lord, for this great catch, for this great rapture of the church to meet you, Lord, in the air. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for tuning in to Living Supernaturally. For more resources to strengthen your spiritual walk, please visit apcwo.org.